Hello, everyone. I'm Mike Cadera. Thanks for coming. Um, what we wanted to do today is talk a little bit about a competition that we ran called Rule the Stack. So I'm with Intel. Um, I've actually been, my team has been supporting that event along with the, the foundation and other groups within the community. And what we wanted to do is kind of show a little bit about what we've done with the event as well as the lessons learned. And what, what you'll, we want you to walk away with is what you can do in your environment today. So I'm here today with um, Pete and Dirk and Adam as well. And so um, they have uh, worked with uh, us actually competing in the competition. And they've got some great results that they're going to share with everyone today. So a little bit about what we'll talk today is uh, I'm going to give you an overview about the competition, the reason why we had it, and some of the things that we did in the event to help make it fun for the group. And then we'll talk about some of the past competitions and the challenges that we had and the lessons learned. And those lessons learned are not just from you know, the winning and that is all the pieces that go into that, but it's what we've taken back to our own teams and worked with it in, in our own groups, as well as what we've done to help evolve the competition. Now, we've hosted this competition at the last three events, and uh, Atlanta, Paris, and Vancouver. Now, this time we're taking a little bit of a break, and what we wanted to do was kind of uh, bring in more people from the community and get more information on ways we can bring in new challenges and really start to challenge even more people, some of the people that are new to OpenStack, as well as the veterans, and give out different prizes for different things, focus on things that the uh, community is really starting to work on as well. So a little bit about why we set up OpenStack, or Rule the Stack, uh, initially. And it really was to demonstrate readiness of that whole environment through showcasing results, and results that people are actually implementing in the competition things that the community is implementing in OpenStack. If you think back to when we had started in Atlanta, I mean, we're, you're thinking about the Ice House days, Havana, and the challenges that went into that. I know that um, I was in our IT group, and we deployed OpenStack back in Diablo. And, I, and OpenStack's come a long way since then. And you know, there's a lot of work that went into that. And even since you know, those, two, those releases there, so much had happened. And if you think back to the history of, of OpenStack and what people were thinking then, they think a POC, they think challenging, hard to do, it'll take weeks to get set up. And that was the real purpose of our initial, um, our, our initial competition was challenging that. And so we wanted to really bring in more of the leadership within the community and what people are doing in that community to showcase the new features, uh, talent, as well as new approaches. And of course, have fun. And we gave out lots of great prizes, uh, one of them you'll see right here, um, as well as just, you know, it really created a lot of fun at the event as well. So uh, sorry if you came to get a couple of, tr of tips and tricks for competing this time, but we will have it at Austin. You can definitely get ready to, to compete there. So this is a little bit of that buzz. Uh, one of the things I really like to, um, you know, that I really liked about the event is that you really looking at all the, co the competitors and the amount of energy in the area, uh, people really watching all the teams getting into it and the new techniques and talent and, and challenges that people would take on. So the idea of just getting people to step outside of their comfort zone and getting people that wouldn't normally do these types of things to step up and do those challenges. So it was really a lot of fun. A lot of people like to see us uh, continue this event and so that's one of the things we'll be looking for input from you as well. So kind of just summarize why we're holding that competition. Really, the initial part is that OpenStack's hard. You know, we need to challenge that and we need to drive the community and bring in new ideas to make this better. And so that's what we're looking for is to help, is to help showcase that through the results of the competition. And it takes long to deploy. That, of course, I think you'll, you'll be really surprised at some of the results that we've seen with this competition. And of course, show enterprise readiness. I mean, you need to make sure your, your services are responding. They're always up. If you're going to have a cloud, you're going to have customers there. You want to keep them happy. How do you do that? Enterprise readiness, making sure that those services are available. And of course, we've talked about the buzz. And um, of course, the community point of view. That is always important to make sure that we're looking at the community and considering all approaches. So let's talk a little bit about past competitions. So I mentioned about 
Atlanta, Paris, and Vancouver. So initially it was pure speed. As fast as you can get it up, we had of course some challenges that we in included in it to make it a little bit more fun. But Paris, we started to evolve it a little bit more. And really looking at how you can make it more high highly available, all of those services, um, should one fail, how does another one come back online, making sure that you know, whether it's Nova or Keystone or all of those things that you, know, you need to have those, those services up. And the way we tested was by focusing on the VMs, making sure that they're available. And then in Vancouver, we evolved the competition even more to focus on getting to Kilo first, all those new Kilo features, as well as some performance tuning. And it was still a competitive, um, looking at it from speed, that was still the, uh, the biggest important component, but we included more features that you'll see in a moment. So the way we set up the competition is not unlike the way you'd have a small rack in your environment, but what we did is we designed it for head-to-head -head competition. So uh, one team would have uh, their own uh, client systems that were connected to the rack for KVM. We had VLAN set up, and then some common, um, a, a common setup within the uh, environment. You're seeing that just kind of most of these systems are relatively the same, but a little bit of difference with RAM and the SSDs were in there. So it's not unlike an environment that you'd have, maybe a couple of different generations. Now, one of the things that we did as we transitioned to Vancouver is we reduced the number of nodes. And now the reason why we did that is that we're starting to really learn from the competition. We had, of course, we want, always wanted to have hardware on site so people could run this. But we started to really look at some of the things that we're doing for shipping hardware all over the place. Sometimes the, you're concerned about these servers surviving a drop or something like that that would happen in, in shipping. So we just actually reserved a couple of extra systems that would be ready for uh, if we needed them. Luckily, we didn't. But uh, there's a couple of lessons learned that we had in setting up and running the environment that I think we'll, we'll talk about. Um, the Vancouver environment, we also had uh, a couple of other hardware features we had. We have our brand new, um, at that point, the um, Xeon E5 2600 V3 release. And so we wanted to bring that to the event as well as showcasing some security components that uh, that platform had. And that's why you're seeing the TPM module on that. Okay, so I mentioned Atlanta, pure speed. That was the whole idea. Now we also added additional time deductions on there. So first, live migration. So really looking at some of the things, are, oh, sorry, live migration is the second bullet, but that is one of those things that was new to the event. And of course, live upgrade. This was the one we wanted to make sure if you could roll an upgrade within your environment. And this was a very challenging um, attempt at this stage, and that's why you're seeing the 30-minute uh, deduction. And then the next with running OpenStack with high availability, and that takes a lot of work. And I think we'll talk a little bit more about how that impacted the way that some of the teams had uh, with success with the event. And then using Heat. Heat was pretty new at this time and making sure that people were using it, promoting the new things in OpenStack, that was the idea. Okay, so this is what happened. Can you believe that? Three minutes, 14 seconds to set up eight nodes in OpenStack, fully functional and running. Pretty remarkable. And so I'm going to bring up the team to talk about that, as well as we had, I mean, Marantis did a great job as well, seven minutes. That's just remarkable. A little bit over that. Okay. You want to, we have a few lessons learned on how you did it. So, um, just to explain right away, we didn't actually set up uh, eight nodes because the, the, the spirit of the whole event was to be fast. Mm -hmm. So I walked by the booth. Uh, I didn't actually know around the ch about the challenge until I actually walked by the booth uh, in Atlanta. So at some point in time, I saw that like people are reading DevStack documentation, so I immediately recognized it, and they're doing Git checkouts, and I wondered what this competition is about. And I learned so. Okay, it's about deploying OpenStack and being the fastest. So I thought about, at that time, point in time when I walked by, it was like maybe one hour or, or two hours the, 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 the head entry. And I thought like, okay, we can, we, can, we can be quicker than one hour. And one way I thought to reduce uh, the effort was to install only one node. So the Atlanta challenge, since it was about pure speed, was also about reducing the number of things that could go wrong. 
and I thought installing multiple nodes, if you, if you don't know exactly the network environment, the hardware environment, everything, and you have unreliable network connectivity to the outside, that's one thing to get rid of. So I did a one node install. So in the end, what I did is I prepared a USB stick with an image, and the image contains SUSE Linux Enterprise. Uh, the reason I picked that operating system is because I know it's certified for the hardware, so I didn't have to deal off with any of problems or potential compatibility issues. I know it's certified, it just works, so I don't have to deal with that problem. And so what I prepared is a USB stick that was plugged into one of the servers, and it was booting up, and during booting up, it was actually also installing uh, the system as it booted up on the machine because the requirement for the competition was to have an installed system. So we, we have something called OEM installer, which is basically copying a compressed image onto the drive and makes it bootable automatically, and that takes just about 26 seconds. So the image was around 250 megabytes in size. So it's fairly small, fairly slim thing. And another neat trick that I did, it was immediately k exiting the in installed system because um, I think the post process for booting those servers was around three minutes or so. So you wouldn't end up with a competition time of three minutes, 14 seconds if you wait for a reboot, uh, uh, which takes maybe two or three minutes. And then we had like roughly 30 seconds uh, for just booting the general operating system, like booting initial services and so on. And then I was starting to scratch my head because I realized <laughs> that I forgot to disable um, waiting for DHCP. So on the, by default, the, the image was configured to power on all Ethernet devices that it could find and waiting for 30 seconds to get an IP address. And by the time I entered the competition, there was something wrong with the network and something like that. So it was just like waiting there 30 seconds and was like, hmm, this didn't go the way I wanted it to be. <laughs> anyway, so I, after 30 seconds it recovered and just continued. And then what I did is I injected a script that was installing uh, OpenStack. So the, the, the image had the OpenStack packages from SUSE OpenStack Cloud included, so it was just a regular off-the-shelf product basically with our packages and included a script that we call OpenStack Quick Start. It's a script that sets up a single tenant, single VM, very bare, minimal cloud, and we use that usually for testing. So it, it's part of our Jenkins integration testing workflow. Whenever we do a change to, to our development environment, we are running, running this test. So everything was prepared. The only thing I had to do was bundle that all up into one solution. And the lesson learned for me in that scenario was really you don't want to rely on factors that you can't control. So if you rely on DHCP being available and it's not available, that's going to throw you off the, off the uh, competition. Also, the, the external network was kind of okay, but sometimes it dropped. That, that threw off many other people who were doing like Git checkouts of Nova, and like after 20%, the network connection dropped, and they had to start over again. And that, I mean, in a, in a normal deployment scenario, you can just deal with that, and you do... You, go for a coffee break and do something else, but in, in, in a competition where it's about pure speed, uh, you're thrown off the fence. Also, one story that I like, and I have to quickly check if the person is here. No, it's not. So there was one other competitor who prepared a live CD with OpenStack pre-installed, so he pre-configured everything. Uh, he configured our VM, so it had everything included, and it was a live USB stick image. Uh, which was allowed in, uh, under the rules of competition. So uh, the thing I did was um, having an empty operating system and installing OpenStack from scratch. And he had everything prepared and had, was walking with the USB stick to the competition. But one thing that he forgot was to make uh, or change the USB stick to be an installer image. So he had downloaded some inst instructions from the internet on how to convert the live USB stick into an installed system. And the thing that he did was he was scribbling those notes and how to do that on his hand. So he had a pen and he had his written on his hand. So he was booting the USB stick, everything went fine. It was like maybe 20 seconds, so I was really getting nervous. <laughs> and then he was starting to like read uh, the instructions that he had previously scribbled on his hand. And after some lines of scribbling and reading and typing, he apparently misread or misread what he did 
or what he was writing there. So instead of copying the USB stick to the hard drive, what he did, he was copying the hard drive which was empty to his USB stick. So one thing. Must have had sweaty hands. Yeah, maybe, maybe, there, maybe there was some sweat involved. I don't, I don't know why that would happen, but. <laughs> So one thing really to learn is you want to avoid manual steps. So anything that could go wrong is the person uh, most likely in front of the computer. So you want to test everything, you want to prepare everything, you want to be um, automating everything that you have to do in order to do a successful deployment. So that way you can iron out all the human mistakes. I mentioned that already, so we use Kiwi, we really like Kiwi, we are working with that also in the product. Uh, it's an image builder, it can create um, images in, in various formats for various purposes. And as another um, lesson learned here is the minimal solution that has the less, the least impact or the least, um, the least risk of failing is the one that wins. So uh, minimizing the risk in, in having your deployment going wrong is another lesson learned. <coughs> Reflecting that a bit, so the lessons learned for, for those who organized the competition, I think, were um, some of the time benefits were slightly unbalanced. So when you do such a challenge, it's all about more or less about gamification. So you think about, okay, is it worth doing this extra feature to win the bonus? Because in the end, you do the bonus in order to be uh, further ahead in the competition. And there were some about five minutes for HA and five minutes for deploying heat. If you automate deploying heat, it's maybe 10 seconds. So the five minutes is a big win. If you deploy HA, it probably takes you more than five minutes to do that. So it, it's a negative benefit more or less. Also, the goal was uh, for this competition to be open for everyone. So it, it attracted a lot of people who had never deployed OpenStack before, which is a very good thing in my opinion, and that's something that we shouldn't lose in, in future, future competitions. So it should be really open for everyone. It shouldn't be like only siloed for people who are doing professional OpenStack deployment all the time. But it also had some trouble. So the rules were not announced in advance, so people didn't know about it, they couldn't think about it, they couldn't prepare for it. And well, really many tried to f just follow the dev stack installation guidelines, which, well, is, is interesting, but you're not competing. I mean, everyone doing the same steps on the same hardware. Um, I mean, it's just seconds that you could beat each other with. Okay, and many of the contest rules really require you to prepare. Um, if, you do, if you've never done that before, you're running into a lot of first time mistakes and you don't want to do that while you're running against the clock. And another thing is the contest rules probably need to require a more realistic deployment. So I, I know I gamed the system more or less by, because rules didn't say I have to deploy all eight nodes, it was open. And I mean, many of the others who entered the competition also only deployed one node. But that's not a realistic deployment, to be honest. I mean, you are deploying on multiple nodes. But lesson learned, we did change the rules for the next event. <laughs> um, a couple of things that we really did learn from that event, from hosting it, was really looking at um, the rules that we did expose and the time we did. And so we started looking at what we can expose a little bit early to create buzz, but um, you know we still were working that a little bit. So as we moved to Paris, we did change things, of course, really focusing on speed, of course, being the number one thing, but then bringing in high availability. And so the, you can see the tests that are, are important. You know, if a controller node goes down, um, of course, we could also bring in um, a, a, a test of our own. You know, so we got to you know, pick what we wanted to do. Um, all their clusters, of course, and then of the Nova, uh, one Nova node going down as well. So um, that was the big focus for the Paris Summit. Um, it was a lot that we had done um, to alter the event this time and just give it a little bit more of a twist. So Adam had done a great job with this one. And again, we had really rethought those rules and changed things. So it was a, a bit of a different challenge. But still, you look at it, OpenStack up and running on all those nodes, <laughs> 53 minutes. So Adam, you want to talk about that a little bit? Here you go. I'll give you that, too, if you want it. Hi. Uh, so when I saw the rules for this, 
challenge, um, which I think we only saw like when we arrived or maybe a day or two before, I can't remember, but I, I saw them and I was really happy because um, I, all the, the work that I'd done for a workshop, um, actually not just at the Paris summit that it says there, but also in Atlanta um, six months before, uh, I'd prepared a, a hands-on workshop for people who wanted to deploy a, com a complete, highly available cloud from scratch on their own laptops. Um, and if you, you can imagine like the, the number of different types of laptop that people bring, um, it was a pretty ambitious goal to have everybody um, deploying a, an HA cloud from scratch, uh, especially if they'd never deployed OpenStack before, which uh, was true in some cases. So, and, and this was a 90 minute hands-on workshop, I think, or maybe two hours. I think it was 90 minutes. So realistically, we had to aim for everybody to be able to do it guided through by us within one hour to leave time for things going wrong and questions and so on. So we'd put in a huge amount of work um, into automating the deployment um, o over the, really the year leading up to this competition. So when I saw the rules, I knew, well, we can basically just reuse all that uh, capability that's already in our product and then some stuff around the product as well. So we had uh, vagrant boxes with the product uh, in prepared images and a vagrant file that automates the whole deployment. And I'd also implemented this feature in our Crowbar deployment tool that um, can allow you to configure and set up a whole cloud uh, from a single YAML file, more or less, um, for setting up all the OpenStack components. So we had all the ingre ingredients and it was just a question of um, doing some small customizations to apply it to the competition. So there were a few networking tweaks and so on. And um, yeah, so that's what happened. We just basically applied all that work that I'd already done for another reason. And, and it, it just worked. So we were really happy. And, uh, uh, and the, there were a few other competitors, of course. Um, uh, no one actually managed to, I don't think they managed to set up uh, an HA cloud at all. No, uh, that, you were the, the team that had. Right, yeah. Um, and, then, and then we got the, um, the, uh, the, the, the testing by one of the judges, you know, when he started killing controller nodes and so on and seeing what happened. Um, and yeah, so we, we succeeded. Um, and it, it was really, uh, it was, again, a, a team effort. Dirk helped build the, um, the images and other people on, on our engineering team helped in many different ways. Um, so it was definitely not just me. Um, and there was, yeah, the one, one thing for the future is that maybe if there's an HA challenge, the, the power supply should be highly available, as well, redundant as well. Um, so we, yeah, we saw with this competition, it, w it was a much harder challenge because HA was a requirement, not just a bonus. Um, so the fewer people attempted it and um, no one else succeeded in even deploying and maybe that was partially because people didn't know in advance so they couldn't do preparation. And um, if it hadn't have been for, for us doing that work in advance, then I you know, probably wouldn't have been able to do it either. Uh, so that was kind of luck that we had it al already done. Um, so the, the question for the future is, you know, w when there's a, a particular part of the challenge, um, should it be a bonus or a, a hard requirement? That should say requirement there, not requires on the third point. Um, and yeah, but we're, the current thinking of, in the discussions we've had about future competitions is maybe make it a bit more flexible and then offer bonuses for different features to encourage as many people to compete as possible. Yeah, so uh, lessons learned just from us hosting it, of course, with the HA and power. Um, really, you live in the environment that's given to you, and that's one of the things with bringing hardware. You know, you have, we had teams that have to work off of the power supplied by the event staff, as well as the networking. And you know, I mean, who's getting a great network connection right now in this room? I mean, it's, you're all fighting for what's available. So um, preparing your images, everything that you need, and walking up and then executing the competition was really uh, a big challenge. I mean, we definitely had network connectivity, but you know, you're know, you fighting for the, that bandwidth with everyone else. I'd just like to add that um, I, I do live and breathe HA, as witnessed by my HA lanyards. 
Okay, so on to Vancouver. I've changed it up a little bit, but, but still focusing on speed and accuracy of that deployment and provisioning time. So what we wanted to do was really promote Kilo. And so we, you know, we gave basically a penalty if you went with earlier releases. So you still allowed people to deploy older releases, but bonuses for the latest or, or a penalty if you want to look at it that way. Rolling upgrades, again. Um, now the next thing we did is really performance tuning. And the idea here was this was a very simple uh, tweak you can do just to make sure that you can expose underlying chipset capabilities that are common with your platform. And so by just editing your flavors, your image flavors, and tweaking them a little bit, you can actually expose um, various things that we have, and that's that enhanced platform awareness. There's multiple features that are available for multiple different platforms. And so uh, that was just kind of to showcase the simple things that people can do to really tune their environment. And then VM deployment with heat continued, and um, we also proposed a secure compute environment with trusted compute pools, and that is leveraging that TPM module so you can actually have root attestation measuring um, your uh, boot up environment all the way up to the hypervisor. And that would just be showing a little bit more of the security features within the platform and then live migration again. So with the Vancouver results, um, again, we had uh, Dirk do a great job with it and Adam and the team really, I mean, you can see, look at this, the negative when you get into bonuses. So they finished before they started. A little bit of a time travel with that. So, um, But things to really note with this, too, is that we had a lot of different teams competing in this, and that was what we wanted. Um, you know, we had the Marantis team there that actually came in day one, jumped in and did it, and their record held for three days. So they really did, for someone just jumping in cold and doing it, still great results. And then um, with the, that whole HA and the environment you're living in, we had networking issues. And um, Walter from Rackspace, he was our determined competitor. He was going to fight through those issues and getting his, uh, his components downloaded. So he, he battled through it, got it all going. And then we had our first female competitor um, from Red Hat that um, she did a great job in jumping in and, and uh, winning, the, uh, winning an award for competing. So, so a little bit about uh, everything you did there. Sure. Um. One slide too much. Um, so uh, the entry for me in, in, in Atlanta was more or less a refresher of what I did in Atlanta. Um, so it's, it's the same principle. So it's, it's a prepared operating system image that installs itself automatically and starts things on, on boot up. And instead of doing one image, I did two images. So in order to deploy actually a multi-node instead of one node, so I split it out one controller node and had m like five or so compute nodes available. Um, and this time I actually didn't expect to win. So that's why we had also a, a backup, like highly available. So Adam and Vassar were doing a second entry of a different approach because I was personally believing that I would not succeed. Um, luckily I was wrong. Um, the reason why I believe that it was fairly challenging for us um, to bring up uh, Sleetwolf, which was <coughs> barely available in our OpenStack cloud environment, on top of the freshest Kilo, which was at that time just maybe released like two weeks ago or so. And there were well, many variables that, or things that could go wrong. So we had um, a lot of things to prepare and a lot of things to test. And there were lo many, many, many last minute bugs and uh, long nights to <laughs> spend on this. And um, basically, but it was more or less the same thing, and it worked out just fine. So it, it was fully automated. We plugged in six USB sticks, everything installed, everything registered against each other, and we had a f uh, full OpenStack cloud running just fine. And we demonstrated the additional features live. I think it was live migration, um, heat, horizon. They, they were, so we, we gained a couple of bonuses, and that's how we end up with negative time. Um, also, there were some things that made things quicker, like the switch uh, to systemd in Sleet 5, so that paralyzed the boot, which both caused a bit of uh, regressions, but it also speed up the, the challenge quite a bit. So and it's, it's a lot faster than the stuff that we had before. But as I said, I didn't actually believe to win, so uh, we had a second entry. Maybe, Adam, you want to comment on that one? 
Yeah, so this wasn't hugely different from what I did in the previous competition, really, except for uh, not going with an HA install because uh, there was no requirement for it. In fact, there wasn't even a time bonus for it, um, and it was just extra risk, like Dirk said earlier. There's no point taking on extra risk if there's no reward for it. Um, so we just kept it simple. And I think on this occasion, actually, I also had the, uh, the administration server, uh, which is responsible for deploying the software. I think that was actually on a laptop uh, externally connected to the cloud rather than being installed as part of the, the challenge. So that saved a bit of time. Um, we didn't, with the Cloud5 product, um, it's Juno-based, so we, we got a 10-minute time penalty um, for not being on the latest release, but uh, we reduced that penalty by yeah, doing the same things as Dirk did, deploying heat, um, live migration, and I think there was like a CPU architecture yeah. feature. Yep. ABX, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I mean, not, not really any special tricks there. It's just, you know, what our, our product does, it can just deploy things very quickly um, in a completely automated fashion. So um, again, that was, yeah, just a, a safe backup uh, second place. Oh, I, I can talk about this, I guess. Um, so uh, the, the tools that we used here, uh, Dirk has mentioned some of them already. Um, Kiwi is the image building tool that we used to build all of these appliances effectively. Uh, Crowbar is our deployment <coughs> piece and orchestration piece within uh, the product. And that, so that does um, the majority of our, well, all of our deployment automation. Um, Dirk already mentioned the OEM install. Um, <coughs> and yeah, uh, we, you know, we benefited from having all those tools available for sure. And um, the, the, yeah, having the new uh, release of OpenStack come out, um, it makes the, the challenge difficult if it involves that because it doesn't leave much time for testing in advance of the competition. Um, and similarly with the network, you know, the more you know in advance and can plan for that, um, the easier it becomes. So, and we'd learned from the previous competition in terms of automating our network configuration. Okay, so summarizing the lessons for the future. Um, we received a lot of feedback, positive and negative, and we agree with every feedback saying that the competition should have realistic deployment scenarios as a result. So there's no win for anyone in any way to have a just gamification of the challenge. So it has to be realistic, it has to be something that customers would actually want to prove. Otherwise, the, the competition is more or less um, not the thing that also we would like to see. Uh, so in the future, our belief is we should also maybe put a bit more on the manageability and the deployment quality of what, what is being deployed. So I mean, in reality, to be completely honest, it doesn't really matter if you deploy in 51 minutes or in 52 minutes. Uh, but if the tier 52 minutes deployment actually works in all the scenarios that you want, you would rather prefer that one. So in some way, we have to change the rules to, to be in favor of that one, instead of try favoring the one that is maybe five seconds quicker than the other one. And also, one thing that I noticed is we always had a live upgrade in the challenge, and no one, as far as I know, maybe correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> no one ever attempted, not in Atlanta, not in Paris, not in Vancouver. That gotta tell you something. Mm -hmm. We're going to keep it there, is what it tells you. <laughs> so one of the things we want to do was was talk about not only, you know, okay, so we did this, we had these um, contests, we won, we we proved some things, but also, you know, what's you know, how's that relevant to what we're trying to do in the real world? So first of all. I think the lesson from Dirk and from Adam is automate as much as you can, not only in in the world of how to win a competition, but the more that's automated, the fewer places that you have to make an er error. Going back to, to Dirk's comment about the other competitor on the first competition of having to do a lot of manual steps, especially when you're in pressure, you, 
you have a finger check, you just type something wrong and it's a problem. So the more you automate, the more successful not only winning competitions can be, but also being successful in, um, in deploying. Every customer that I know that has gone through installing SUSE OpenStack Cloud has probably done the installation five, ten times before they finally get into production just because they made a mistake, they learned something, they want to tweak something, they, it just takes a while. The second point is, <laughs> um, man is a tool using animal, so use tools. Um, again, it's similar to the, to the automate everything, but if you, can, if you can use a tool to build an image, if you can use a tool to, to orchestrate your deployment, that's the right thing to do. Um, because it simplifies the process, it makes it more repeatable. Um, repeatable processes are less prone to errors and, and, and can, be, can be optimized. So, that leads into if, if, if you were in the keynote today when Erica Brescia was talking about, um, you know, what Bitnami is doing at the end of the presentation, she said, you know, use an OpenStack distribution because it makes things easier but doesn't solve all the problems. You still need to add some um, additional capabilities. But why do you use an OpenStack distribution? So, uh, I think this is an old Icehouse or Juno statistic that there were 1,400 parameters, 11 components that you had to install and coordinate the installation of those. And it sometimes can feel like taking a big box of Legos and dumping them out on the floor and, and start working. Um, and this is just a picture. So, it's not just that you have to deal with OpenStack. So here's some, you know, the orange boxes are OpenStack, but you need to pick a hypervisor, you need to pick a message queue, you need to pick a database. You're going to have third-party adapters if you're using Cinder or Neutron or Manila and other projects coming on in the future. Um, you've got to pick an operating system. As, as Dirk said, you know, we're fortunate we're using SUSE Linux Enterprise Server and it's certified on all, all tier, one, uh, tier one hardware, so it was easy to make sure that that was going to work in the environment. Um, but then most importantly is wrap an installation framework around it because that's the tool that helps you automate the deployment process. And it looks like this. So instead of, instead of having a big box of Legos dumped out on the floor, you buy a kit that gives you something that's fast, it gives you something that's repeatable, and it gives you something that, that ultimately is, is scalable and reliable. Um, there's many options. You can go on the OpenStack uh, website to see the various distribution options that are available. Um, it really does make sense to try and to try and work with one of those. So the real world lessons, just just wrapping up. Um, you know, clearly you want to plan around making something that's going to actually be useful once you've done the deployment. I think that's what, what Dirk's comment was at the end was you want to have something that, 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 that represents um, a distribution or a, an installation that makes sense. Networking not only in contributions but also what we've seen in terms of working with customers. Networking is the biggest challenge on getting OpenStack working. Um, it's just a complex problem in general but then when you start adding multiple different networks um, between the VMs, from the VMs to the outside world, back-end storage networks, it gets to be very, very complicated. Um, you know, you want to minimize hard going through, a, again, in a competition phase, uh, minimize um, doing reboot because, because post is, is slow. There are differences in how fast um, operating systems install. So from a, from a competition point of view, you know, using, using something that can be configured as a lightweight image uh, that can boot easily off of the USB stick is a, is a huge advantage. Um, and then can you, uh, do you want to build from packages or do you pre-build packages and actually just take uh, uh, images that you can then just deploy directly? Uh, can speed things up um, uh, tremendously. Uh, and then one thing is you need to make sure that once you get everything up and running, if you pull your, your installation media that you use, um, you hope your cloud doesn't go down. Um, I think that was one of the things, the problems that some of the, the competitors ran into was they get everything up and running, they pull the media out and, and things just stop working. Um, and then uh, finally, using tools, using some modularity because you're not going to have you know, it's going to be different in Austin than it was in, in, in Paris or Vancouver or Atlanta. Um, so you, you need to be prepared for, for dealing with, uh, uh, with a different sort of setup and a different sort of requirements as we, as we go forward. So having a, having a tool that, is, that is, gives you the ability to configure the deployment is, is, is going to be important for winning uh, going in the future. Now, this is, all, this is all good about, you know, doing this competition, but so what? Um, was there any real benefit upstream for the community? And we think there were a couple. First of all, 
when we did HA in, in Paris, there was still some perception that HA was a hard thing to do and that you needed to go get a consultant in the house to help you configure your cloud if you wanted to be highly available. Even though the instructions were available on OpenStack.org and the documentation, um, what we did was build the tooling to automate that process. As Adam said, he, 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 he built it for a, for a workshop session that, that, that he did with, I guess it was with Florian, right? With, with Florian Haas from Hostexo, they put together a workshop to show that it was capable of being, auto, you know, you can automate this process. Um, but in doing that, <laughs> we also identified a bunch of bugs in Pacemaker and CoroSync, which are the fundamental layers that provide the HA capability. And because no one had gone through the rigorous process of how do I really get this thing stood up in a real world environment, how do I deploy it, um, uh, once we did that, we, we identified problems. So, you know, in the process of going through not only the competition, but putting through the workshop, we actually found problems in the underlying Linux environment that we could then push upstream to, to repair. So, proved HA was simple to employ, it could be automated, we did some fixes to the underlying infrastructure. Um, <laughs> this is the one thing that I think that, that, that doing things quickly helped identify was we identified race conditions in the install process. And why if you're going through it a more relaxed environment as opposed to trying to get it set up in, in three minutes and 14 seconds or whatever, you may not care about that. Um, the reality is that there's, there's always a chance when there's a, when there's a latent race condition existing in the environment that you could cause a problem. You know, an install can fail, sometimes it will fail silently, you're not sure what's going on. So by doing it quickly, we actually identified and fixed a number of uh, race conditions that existed in OpenStack components themselves. Um, <laughs> and then the last one is um, uh, we provoked healthy, and that's a, that's a little bit of a healthy discussions. I think some people were were frustrated at what they thought were some of the vague um, vague rules or shifting requirements, whatever you want to say. So I think the 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 idea was that that we had a lot of discussion around how do we do this in the future? How do we how do we make sure we provide good solid um, um, competitions? But also goes back to the point that. Deployment is still a challenge for a lot of people in the OpenStack environment. So we want to continue doing these, doing these contests because we think it, it highlights the fact that you can do deployments in a repeatable fashion, make it quick, um, reduce errors, make it, make it repeatable. Um, so we think it's, 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 it's important to continue that awareness. So is the last one? Okay. So as we look forward to the next event, we have a birds of a feather discussion coming up in uh, the next day at just before noon tomorrow. So I'd love it if more people could come and join us. That's going to be in the Design Summit Lounge. I wish I could direct you there. I haven't found it yet myself, but uh, I'm sure that many of the people in those nice yellow jackets would be help, will help you get there. But there will be this sign set up there as well. So it'd be great if you could join us. Uh, we do have some great ideas already that we're thinking of. These are some of the ideas here. Um, you know, uh, de-emphasizing speed. I think that that will still be some component because we still have to run a competition and not have people come to the event for the for this and not attend sessions. We need to, of course, balance that. Um, live upgrade. That I still think is is something I'd like to to be there. Maybe maybe by bringing in containerized services might be a way that we could challenge that. Um, and of course, HA. You know, that's something that I think is very important for us to continue with. So lots of ideas. Um, I'm also looking at ways we can look at applications as well and deploying enterprise services with them. So that kind of wraps things up. Um, one of the things I wanted to just kind of bring to your attention is in the Intel booth, we are running a passport program. And you get a stamp by attending this session. You can see myself or Derek, who's right over here. And we can give you one of these, or you can stop by the booth. Um, but uh, feel free to join us. You can win a compute stick. Um, they're a, a really cool little tool. But yeah, you can just come up here and, and get a, a stamp from me or Derek, or you can stop by our, our booth. All right. And that brings us to the end. Yes? I'll leave a mic up here for you guys to answer as well. Here you go. Hello, hello. Okay. Um, 
quick question. For the last three competitions you got ran, uh, the configs and the video, are they posted, are they live? So we do have um, the configs, both, uh, both of you have blogged about them. And in our, in our session notes, um, we have the links to both of those blogs and the results. Um, if you go to, Intel has an open source website called 01.org. And we, you can just search on rule the stack, open stack, and it'll bring it right up. Hello. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I also have a, a a blog post that basically guides you through the whole process of installing the SUSE OpenStack Cloud appliance, which is it's pretty much the same process that I use, minus a few tweaks for the com competition environment. But there's there's a blog post that yeah just guides you through that whole thing. Um, I may be linked. So I can't remember. I do have I, the link in the presentation. I, I can if you give but, me your yeah. email, I can send it to you. Like yeah. Sure. A bit of topic. So you mentioned that you were using Crowbar, which I believe is based on Chef, right? So um, have you considered using other tools? We have considered it for sure, and and we're still considering different config management systems as as the back end. So Crowbar is essentially the orchestration layer on top of Chef that is kind of more multi-node aware. Um, we, we, in the end, we've, I mean, we've looked at other things, but in the end, we've stuck with it um, because it has a lot of capabilities that are actually very hard to find elsewhere, and it works well for us. And changing to something else like Puppet or Ansible or whatever would be um, a lot of work. Um, and that's not to say that we might not do it in the future, but it's, it's not a change to be taken lightly because we've invested a lot of work into the chef cookbooks. Um, so the question was, do, do we have an example of a feature that is a lot of work to translate? Or? Oh, um, well, um, yeah, it's really the combination of several things. So there's the like bare metal discovery, inventory, allocation. Um, we've got multi-hypervisor stuff in there, the high, high availability, the automated deployment of all that in a very flexible manner, um, which requires a lot of orchestration and synchronization between different things in the workflow. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, if you want to sure. talk to us afterwards, I can go into more detail. Uh, just, just a confirmation question. So with the line migration, you guys are talking about have a guest instance that you can migrate to the contestants uh, uh, open. Okay. Exactly. In the past, we've run a ping test. Okay. And that's how we've tested that. OK. And just a couple more questions. Number one, for the potential contestant, have you guys thought about maybe for the future that there is a vagrant image that they can practice mm -hmm. on that? Um, we didn't want to necessarily tie to a specific image. But one of the things we've really considered is by exposing different, and we were thinking of Easter eggs as we lead up to the competition. So for example, we would, uh, of course, expose the hardware requirements early. But as we get closer and closer, we could just kind of give out little more information on where to go. Like, for example, maybe push people to a specific um, session at the event that would give away the, re the, the results on what you could do to implement one of those, uh, those features. So those are the things we're thinking of. We want to we wanna give enough people information to prepare, but we don't want, it, we don't want to give away everything. So, yeah, we've we done something with console that uh, we have a little testing environment where we use that to do some uh, scenario <laughs> tests and also interview test lab. Maybe we can talk offline. Yeah, that'd can, be great. Uh, we can collaborate. Yep. Thanks. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. If you have any other questions, you can talk to us uh, offline. <laughs>